Hello everyone, this is Sergio. You know that I am an avid fan of the brand Porsche. Today we will see such a rare representative of this brand that it is even more exclusive than Turbo S. To see this car, we drove 300 kilometers, and today we have Porsche 911 in the body of 991 MK1 Targa. As for quality, Porsche is the highest level. Everyone understands that this is a mega quality car. There are only three of these cars in Ukraine. And to see one of them, we drove 300 kilometers. Today we will introduce you to this car. How can a Porsche owner stand out from the rest of the crowd? After all, these cars are all a little bit alike. Turbo, atmospheric engine, convertibles or the usual sports coupe. I'll answer. You have to buy Porsche 911 Targa. But there are very few of them, I'll explain why. It is an atmospheric car, but not very powerful it has 420 horsepower. In terms of price this car can be compared with Porsche Turbo, or even Turbo S in a cheap configuration. That is why there are very few of them, only three in Ukraine. For this reason, we traveled 300 kilometers. Today we will introduce you to her. Guys, we already have Teras in the frame. Hi, Teras. Hello. Teras is the owner of this wonderful car. We very often try to involve the owners in our videos. For them to tell for themselves. How they purchased their cars, the features of the cars, their pros and cons. It's quite difficult because it's not always possible for people to behave in a relaxed way during a shoot. We have to talk to them for hours to get them to open up a little bit. But we're going to do it anyway, because you like this format a lot. Teres, I want to ask you something. You've owned several Porsche 911 model cars. And even now your family owns two Porsche cars. How did you come to this, and how many years have you been driving a Porsche? Because all the time that I know you, three or four years, you drive these cars. How many years have you been driving a Porsche? The first Porsche appeared about five years ago. It was Porsche 911 restyled 10th year, the engine was 3.8 liters. The car was already outdated and I wanted a new car. And chose this car? Yes. I agreed with Teres that I would support him in a conversation, because he is very worried, rarely filmed. We will definitely show his car now. It was his car that took part in several of our videos and races. We will include them to you for sure. The car was in perfect condition, it was a 2010 year car with a box PDK. It was an atmospheric engine car, it's probably the best maintained Porsche in this body that I've ever seen. You drove it for a few years, and then you decided to buy Porsche the next generation, the 991. How many years ago was that? That was two years ago. I wanted something exclusive. Porsche a lot of people have the usual Carrera. What about Turbo? How about Turbo? This car is fast, but not to my liking. I just like the body Targa, there are very few of them in Ukraine. I wanted to stand out with something. I want to emphasize one point. Many people chase numbers, many people chase speed, many people chase status. For the brand Porsche this car is the most status oriented. The car is very rare, very exclusive. Few people have the courage to buy a car that is not the fastest, but atmospheric. The car itself is fast, but compared to turbo this car will be much slower. And it will cost about the same. What is the price of the car and what year is it? It's a 15-year-old car, and I paid about $95,000 for it. America. America? Yes. This is a very interesting story. We will specifically focus on this now. Let me tell you, this car was made in Germany. Then it was bought and transported to Europe. After that, the car was taken to America. That's where Teres bought it and brought it to Ukraine. Is this true? Right. There are even stickers that say the American owners drove the car in Switzerland. Yes, the car had both Swiss and Austrian Autobahn stickers. 
Why did you buy your car in America and not in Ukraine? There are none in Ukraine, and in Europe, they are much more expensive. How much does such a car cost in Europe? Somewhere between 110 115,000 euros, plus it must be cleared at customs and registered, which is a big price. If the car is from America, then the speedometer measures the speed in kilometers? In miles? In miles. Don't even know. <laughs> even in miles. They wouldn't put a car like this in the registry if it wasn't fully adapted to the American market. This applies to turn signals, an additional lock for opening the trunk, as required by US law, and a speedometer scale in miles. Why exactly Targa, for that kind of money you could buy another brand? I think even an inexpensive Ferrari could have been brought, or some other car. Why exactly Porsche? I like the style Porsche. It all started with the first car. I liked the first car, and from then on I only bought Porsche. Yes? Yes. I think that Porsche is a very good car for everyday driving from sports cars. And in fact, Porsche in terms of quality is top notch. We'll talk to Terra's more later, and you'll understand why I talked about quality. This man loves style, loves quality, and in principle, his choice is absolutely obvious. Guys, actually Terra's is a little understating when he says he likes the style Porsche. Everyone understands that these are mega quality cars. We're going to show you one feature of this car, and believe me, it's worth the money Terra's paid. Terra's, let's show you. Let's. Guys, we're going on. By the way, Terra's, did you know that the glass that just came down is worth $12,000? I called the dealer today. Everyone knows that I make videos about Porsche, and it's not the first time I've done it. I have connections and acquaintances among dealers Porsche in Ukraine. I called and asked how much the glass cost for this particular car, and they sent me a price list of $12,000. A piece of upholstery. Hello, sunshine. By the way, a piece of roof upholstery costs $5,000 which means the prices for this car are cosmic. This is the reason for the cost of this car. Terrace, how much was the new car? You sure you looked at the price? 250 to 260 thousand dollars. Yes, about 250 to 260 thousand dollars. In this body you could buy not even Turbo, but Turbo S in a cheap package, of course, by the standards of Turbo S. But people bought such an atmospheric car, which is weaker in terms of parameters, but with unrealistic charisma. I propose now to tell a little more about this car. Here the motor is hidden in the compartment and it is not realistic to get to it. The only thing we can show you is the oil and antifreeze filler caps, we will demonstrate that now. Come on. This is where they are, I'm afraid to put my hands in there. Guys, this is where they are. Two fans and filler necks, you don't need to touch anything else here. And by the way, honestly, I would have been admiring this view of the car for a long time. We got a very unconventional picture. What do you like most about this car, other than the roof? I think you like the roof anyway. Rear. Rear. I like the headlights. And the front side? Not good. Guys, actually at Porsche the front end is always not very pretty, but the rear end is really powerful, it's very cool. What else makes the rear of this car different from any other Porsche of that generation? It is in this model that this chic stripe appeared, only in Targa. It glows, here it appeared five years earlier than in other brands, and Porsche especially accentuates it. Now all brands have a one-piece LED strip, it is considered the latest generation fashion. What else can this car boast of? It's very comfortable to drive long distances, to go to Europe. That's how we operate it. Tell me a little more about your trips to Europe. We go to Croatia, Italy, with an open roof in the mountains, slowly. Do you go just to have fun, to relax, or for some business? For relax. I know you're close to the culture stance, you talk to guys who do project stance. Have you traveled with them? 
Yes, we went to Austria. When you go to Europe, you get pleasure, in Ukraine you don't get such pleasure. Teres, we all live in Europe, this is Ukraine. You live in Rivna, it's almost halfway closer to the border than Kiev. Tell me, have you traveled abroad many times with this car, have you seen a lot of Porsche Targa in Europe? I've only seen it once. And it was your car from the window of the room? <laughs> Almost. There are only three cars in Ukraine, and I only once saw a Lviv car near Krakow in Poland. Yes? Yes. I honestly know that these cars definitely exist. And I've sat in such a car, even in a slightly better car than this one. Let me explain. This car was a 17th year, it had been on sale for two years, and no one bought it. The car was blue, very beautiful, with a blue interior. The car cost $300,000. It was an unrealistically high price. The car was eventually sold during a promotion or at a huge discount. There was a discount of almost $100,000. After that, the car was taken away. This car was on a separate podium in the showroom. That is, Turbo and Turbo S stood side by side, and she stood on a separate podium. The car was the jewel of the showroom at the time. I know it was sold at some discount at the time. We have a version of the car before the restyling. How is it different? First of all, it has slightly different optics. Here the taillights are the same shape, but in the restyling they are slightly recessed and this diode stripe is slightly thinner. It has a different exhaust and a different motor. This is the last atmospheric engine in this body. 3.8 liters, power. 420. 420 horsepower. After that model was the restyled model by Turbo with a 3 liter engine, there was about 420, and then, I think, 450 horsepower. And the exhaust there were two pipes in the center. It's a classic model, with four pipes on the edges of the stern of the car. Let's move on to the interior and tell you what we have here. We are behind the wheel of our Porsche 911 Targa 991 body. Classic interior, almost no different, except for a couple of elements. Let's talk about the basic sets now. There are a lot of buttons, I like it a lot. In all modern cars, even in the Porsche, touchscreen panels are everywhere. And I don't like it very much, the panel is always with fingerprints. There are a large number of mechanical buttons, very cool looking. Here are the classic cup holders, the ones that are in all cars Porsche. See, this can be closed separately. You can even hide them one at a time and drive like that. How is that a good thing? Look how thoughtful the Porsche brand is. You close this, you don't have any opening, and your drink can either be chilled or heated. If the heater works in winter, the drink will be heated. If the air conditioner is running it will cool down. A few years later it was used BMW, but not in the best way. Moving on, here the gearbox PDK, double clutch is very fast and very cool. This package is slightly better than the base, let's say it's in the middle. There is a button sport, control rear spoiler, roughly speaking DS off and shock absorber, also disable stabilization. And in the center we have an interesting button block, which is connected specifically to the roof. Teres, I want to ask you, is it possible to close the roof on the move? No. You have to stop completely and close the roof. Modern convertibles close the roof on the move at low speed. But this car is not a convertible, it has a very massive rear end and you have to stop completely here. But it folds up quite quickly. Here is a restyled steering wheel. I really like this. You know what? It's this. My understanding is that it's for airflow. In order to keep the wind out of the cabin this thing is here. We have a basic instrument panel, navigation everything is here. Guys, before we show you the trunk of this car, there will be our regular column, the key. The key here is a classic from Porsche. See opening, closing and opening the hood, i.e. the trunk. The best part. There is a button. The Americans call this button, panic. That is, you can press this button, and your alarm will go off. I suggest not to stop long on the interior, but to pay more attention to the appearance and the unreal owner of this car. He is a very modest guy. We're about to move into his restaurant in just a few minutes. Teres owns a chain of restaurants and hotels. 
Believe me, there's a lot to see there, it's a very interesting location and we're going to continue shooting our video there. Before that, I want to show you the trunk of this car. Okay, guys, the trunk opens the classic way. On the floor, on the left sill there is a block of buttons for opening the trunk and opening the hood. We have a pretty roomy trunk. Let me show you the difference between America and Europe. In the American version, there is also a lever inside here to open the luggage compartment. According to their law, there must be an opening handle inside. If a child is locked in here, or is accidentally locked out of here, so he can get out. That's the difference between America and Europe. We close the trunk and move on. We're already at Tara's house. I made a little mistake and wore a polo for the shoot, but it wasn't an ordinary polo, I prepared myself. We came here on purpose, let me explain why. You can see that Tara's is an ardent fan of the brand Porsche, in principle, just like me. Today we will only talk about Porsche. Tara's, give me an answer to this question what will be your next car after this one? It will be a new restyled Porsche 911 in a new body. Which body is it? 992. What would you choose? Weak, powerful, or again Targa? I would like Targa, but its price is very high. 300. Yes. I think a regular Porsche will suit me. Yes? I would buy 4 South, to drive in both winter and summer. What things you don't like about your car? What don't you like about this car? I do not like? Yes, you don't like it. You drove many cars, there were many different cars. What do not you like? There's not a lot of room in the car, and that can be a problem. In fact, as for a sports car, a lot of space. Yes, but it can be a problem. If you drive AR8, you'll understand what, not much room, means. What other interesting facts about your car can you tell? What is the top speed at which you drove it? About 295 kilometers per hour, I didn't get to 300. I mean, I pitched your car today as a fairly calm, charismatic, and most importantly, stylish car. You say 295 kilometers per hour, that's practically 300. I don't believe that, and I don't think your car can do that. We can try. Let's check. I agree. Guys, pay attention to the way the bill was served to us. Is that some kind of special rag? Soft. Handy. Guys, a real piston, pretty heavy and weighs about a kilo, cool stuff. That's it, let's move on to the competition. Guys, it's time for our favorite, race, column. We found a very interesting opponent for our Targa you can say it's the younger counterpart of Porsche, is Golf RMK7, 14, Stage 2. It has about 400 horsepower, maybe a little more. But due to the turbo motor and a lot of torque, it seems to me that Porsche will be a very interesting competitor. And Audi R8 is here for a reason. Let me tell you, we came up with a very interesting test. This Porsche is very much inferior in power to my Audi R8, which has 600 horsepower. We decided to make it harder for Audi. Everyone knows that Audi of this generation is a rear-wheel drive car. And starting Audi is not implemented very well. So we're going to do a 0 to 100 km per hour competition with Targa. Because it's all-wheel drive, it has a robot box and it has a very bouncy start. And we are starting. One, two, three. Very cool. Up to a hundred kilometers per hour Porsche practically defeated us. 
Guys, I'm already in our Porsche. Let's go. One, two, three. We flew ahead. Competition with Golf R400 Plus Stage 2. 1, 2, 3. Guys, still in the beginning both cars go side by side, and then we're outrunning them. We set up a competition between the two competitors and it came out just as I thought it would. Golf R Stage 2 with 400 horsepower confidently holds up to 140 km per hour. And after Porsche it overtakes it by a cosmic margin. As for the competition with Audi, Audi although 200 horsepower more powerful, it is practically rear wheel drive. It's now 10 degrees Celsius, and it's very difficult for this machine to work at full capacity. Up to 100 km per hour Porsche confidently leads ahead, after which a miracle happens and Audi R8 quickly flies ahead. And now we're putting our beautiful car in the garage, and that's it. Sergio was with you, let's go.